We're in the audiovisual archive of the Britain Pierce Foundation and it's here that we keep, among other things, the collection of vinyl records that belong to Benjamin Britten and Peter Pierce. And it's a rich and more eclectic selection than you might actually have expected on first sight. Um, we can see, for example, here, there's the, um, the Indian classical tradition which, which fascinated Britain throughout much of his life. Um, and there are some odder things within here that you wouldn't necessarily initially expect to find. Um, for example, we have here the works of Bach arranged for the, the Moog synthesizer. And we've got here um, Duke Ellington, for example, this, this double LP here. And, uh, good lord, um, lurking within it actually there is uh, an LP which has got, as you see, inserted into the gatefold. And this is something that I didn't really expect to find, but that might actually shed some light on, on other aspects of Britain's musical taste. Following Chris's surprising discovery um, in the audiovisual archive, we thought we'd have a look in the Red House and see what there was amongst Britain's other collection of records that we have here. Um, and amazingly, it turns out that there are a few surprises here as well. Um, we've got, amongst the box sets of operas and things you might expect, um, 40 fantastic hits from the 50s and 60s. Um, and actually Britain's interest in pop music in the 50s and 60s hasn't been really explored very much, but there is a letter when he writes to peers in the mid-1960s expressing great admiration for the Shangri-La's leader of the pack, particularly its dramatic denouement, um, and also their later song, um, Sophisticated Boom Boom, with its frankly very original ocarina obligato in the middle. He was very impressed with that. So I'm not entirely surprised to find that in here. Um, but what is interesting as we go through, goodness me, a rare early Barry White album, No Limit on Love, that's remarkable. Um, and just going through these compilation discs, actually, we have Chart Busters, uh, British Motown, with uh, the Supremes, Martha and the Vandellas. And perhaps most remarkably, um, 20 Great Hits of 74. And this includes Abba's Waterloo uh, and also the Wombling Song. So I think this is a very surprising uh, aspect of Britain's listening habits that we just didn't know anything about before. <laughs> 